right. Hi, everyone. All right, we're going to do something I hate. I hate when people make me do this. I'm going to make you do it. This room felt a little dead to me. I'm going to be honest. Everybody stand up. Just do it. Follow the leader. I've got the mic and the clicker. Come on. You guys in the back, you're not that cool. Stand up. And everybody look around because we are back, right? We are back. Give each other a round of applause, right? We're back. All right, sit down. So we're back. Welcome to South Florida. This is my home. I live 22 minutes from here. And uh, it is always fun to be here at IT Expo and see so many familiar faces. I came down here, this kid from Ohio in 1991, to go to college in West Palm Beach, and I never left. And so it's really cool to be here. I love the, Rich and the TMC team, how this, this show has grown. I, rem I remember it 20 years ago and 25 years ago, 22 years ago anyway. And uh, it's really gotten bigger, so it's really nice, and it's a nice introduction, and I'm glad that you guys have survived the times and are still super relevant. So one more round of applause for Rich and the crew. Really, really cool. All right, we're going to get into it a little bit. I hope it was worth the price of admission. We're going to talk a little bit about customer buying habits. Most of us in this room, uh, you're a supplier or you're a partner. By the way, I was a supplier 11 months ago right? 12 months ago, I was a supplier. So I know both sides of the fence. So this conversation is, is for all of us. This is for the suppliers. It's for the partners. No matter what kind of partner you are, meeting your customers in the channel, there's all different flavors. I can tell you that in Telus Scan Source, we want to meet you where you are. And really, that's what this is about today. So let's get into it a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about three things. The first, we're, we're going to set up the third thing. The first thing we're going to talk about is buying habits. It's changed, right? It's changed from when I started, for sure, into where we are today. So we know that there's a lot of different influences in customers' buying decisions now. It's not just the IT guy or gal that sat in the big office. It's marketing, it's sales, it's operations, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, the people office, HR. It's all of those things, and you guys are facing those challenges. So we're going to talk about buying habits. We're going to talk about how all those things play into it. Second thing we're going to talk about is influence. And influence is a big, big, big deal to me. I've talked about it at Channel Partners this year, and you've heard me talk uh, at length about the different ways to influence and be influenced. And it's really, really important, I think, as sellers, uh, that we're influencers, and we're influencer, influencers in the right way, and we're going to talk about how that works, and then why are we doing all this? Why do we care about the buying habits? Why do we care about influence? We care because we're now in this world of what we call hybrid distribution, where I live. And so it's all of these different components now that you've got to think about. It's not just voice, right? It's not just messaging and chat and video but it's security and it's cloud versus on-prem and it's all those different things. So we're going to hit the hybrid distribution model. By the way, I don't have my cell phone on me, but it's also hardware. And so, you know, you, there's no magic pixie dust, is there, to charge that cell phone. You actually have to plug something in. And so everything in the sky that's all magical, I think it plugs in somewhere. So we'll talk about that as well. All right, so let's get into it here. We're going to go backwards. I love that picture, by the way. I got to tell you, yes, thank you. Some of you just noticed it, thank you. Uh, we're going to go backwards. One of my favorite movies of all time. Actually, I saw this movie in 1985. I was 15 years old. It was my first date, and I had a Quiet Riot Velcro wallet. Some of you in the room don't know who that is. I get it. But trust me, it was a pretty cool band. Played a little bit of that earlier. I had 25 bucks in my wallet. You could go to a movie, remember? and go get something to eat. I think I took her to the Olive Garden because it had the free salad and breadsticks, so I just wanted to maximize that. And then I lost my wallet at the movie. So I still remember it. I think she actually had to pay for the popcorn and Cokes. But anyway, we're going to go backwards. We're going to look back. Uh, and, and I think you always have to understand to, to really get a grasp on where we are is, is where we came from, right? How did this happen? If we're going to talk about buying habits and we're going to talk about influence, how did we get here? So. Some of you will recognize this picture. Now, my brother is in the crowd, and he can testify to this. I don't even got to say it, and I know you could come up and say it. That was the phone on my wall at 9784 Loudoun Street in Johnstown, Ohio. It had a 20-foot cord, a 20-foot cord. And here's what happened. Here's how the story goes. You ready? We, uh, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, 
And uh, things were getting bad in Columbus where we lived, and my dad wanted to move us to the country. So we, we, he changed our life. He moved us out to the country. And when we went out to the, to the country, Johnstown, Ohio, population 3,000 in the middle of nowhere, our neighbors are, you know, miles apart. Um, across the street, 500 acres of corn, 500 acres of soybean. You know, we rotate it in Ohio. You know how we do that. And, uh, and so you had to order phone service. You know, we moved out, and you have to order phone service. Our phone carrier, our local provider, was a company called United Telephone. Anybody know that company? Yeah, United Telephone. There's some Midwesterners out there. United Telephone. And so my mom uh, was in charge of all that stuff, right? And so my mom called United Telephone and said, hey, we're the Delosiers. We just moved into Johnstown, Ohio, 9784 Loudoun Street, and we need phone service. And so the gal on the other end said, great, we can help you with that. We have so many new exciting things here. And my mom's like, oh, yeah, tell me about it. She's like, well, first, you can pay for the phone service by yourself, or you've got two neighbors on either side of you. You can become part of their party line. Part of their party line. My mom's like, oh, okay, part of their party line. Now, I don't know exactly what that meant financially, but I know it was enough that my mom said yes. And so literally, if you didn't know this, when you, in those days, a party line, you pick the phone up and your neighbor could be on the phone having a conversation. And so most of us, not Linda Williams, Danny, right? She'd stay on and listen. We'd hear it. We knew she was still on there, but we would hang up. Well, sometimes. Sometimes we listen too. So we got a party line, right? Then they said, okay, cool. Party line. Guess what we have? This new feature. It's called voicemail. And you're not going to believe this, you can actually leave a message, a personalized message on your line, and it costs this much per month. My mom said, do it, we'll do it, we'll take voicemail. Then, one last feature, something called call waiting. So you actually have the ability to be on a phone call and to click over and take another call, right? Think about that. That was 1981 that this happened. Uh, by the way, I saw a stat recently that said we're closer to 1981 now then in 1981, we were closer, as close to 1937. It seems kind of weird. 81 doesn't seem that long ago to me. Did I say that right? Joe's a math work? Yeah, thank you, Olivia. Yes. So anyway, so that's it. So the call waiting. So my mom did all this up, and she said, okay, great. We've got your service down. By the way, this is called Centrex, for all of you that aren't familiar with Centrex. We got all this stuff down, and then the lady says to my mom, okay, Susie, here's the deal. We've got a really cool selection of phones for you. I know you're used to rotary dialing, but we've got this push button deal we can put on your wall, in your kitchen. We know you've got three kids, and they can take that phone anywhere they want in the house. It's a 20-foot cord, and it's a little bit extra, but we can sell it to you in burnt orange. <laughs> and my mom said, yes, wrap it up. And so she got the burnt orange push button phone, and it was a beautiful thing, right? Three days later, something happened. We couldn't believe it. Something happened. This guy shows up in a truck. He's got the phones with him. She went rotary in the bedroom, by the way. So they weren't going to pay for a push button for the bedroom. But they got rotary in the bedroom, the push button on the wall. This guy shows up in a truck. He brings our phones in. He mounts them on the wall in the bedroom. He goes out to some magical place down the street. Boom, the service comes up and it turns on. And we have phone service. That's how it worked back in the day. So I love some of you experienced that. Some of you may not have. I'm going to give you one more example. And then actually I'm going to bring the story together for a reason. Uh, consumer, typically, enterprise always follows consumer. We know this is a fact. And I can talk to you about this a little bit later on in the prezo. And so even the buying habits, right, even that long ago, back in those days, we had our shows like Enterprise Connect and IT Expo and some of the other places that we would visit. And here's how it worked if you were a customer, right? Let's put the partners aside and the suppliers aside for the second. Here's how it worked if you were a customer. If you were a customer, the guy or gal that ran all of IT looked at the person in charge and said, Ray, I want you to go to this show and I want you to bring me back a phone solution. And you looked at him just like you're looking at me. Like, what does that mean? Well, I want you to go to the show and find the right solution for our company, right? Just bring it back. So you got your shopping cart, Ray. You went down to Enterprise Connect aisles, pulling off different things, right? All all prim, throwing it in the cart. You came back and said, here's what I found. Here's what I found. Uh, and it was good. 
it was good. There weren't as many people that had a, a place in that decision, and there weren't as many opportunities, there weren't as many choices, really, that we have today. And so, why do I, why do I throw all that out to you? What's the point of that very long Delosier story? It's that buying habits have definitely changed, but they're still in a lot of ways the same. You see, Centrex really is IP-enabled what we do today, if you think about it. Now, I got in trouble saying this for a supplier that I used to work for. I'm not going to tell you which one, but they didn't like it. But in my mind, it's very much the same, isn't it? Right? It's just come back. Now, it's more complicated. The technology is different. Don't everybody start emailing me, JD, it's not the same. Those were analog lines, and we're in the IP world. And I get it. Right? I get it. But it's definitely very much the same. But you have to be cognizant of how it's different. And so we went backwards to get to today. You definitely aren't showing up at a show if you're a customer, and this is important for all of you in this room, in the partner community, you're definitely not showing up if you're a customer and pulling something off a shelf and forcing your enterprise to make it work. That's not how it works anymore. And so how do we get past that? Did you know, by the way, I don't know if you know this, did you know that the first, my friend Jay McBain told me that, I don't know if he's here, but he told me that, uh, in the first two months of COVID, there was $15 billion spent weekly in digital transformation and IT solutions out of pure panic. Schools and churches and, you know, you name it, insurance companies, the banking industry, every vertical we can think of. And so those, our buying habits change for sure based on what we've been through. But again, now we're seeing it come back to where we are today. So. How do we take advantage of that if we're a partner, as a partner community, how do we do it? How do we take advantage of it? Well, first off, I always say this, you gotta show up, right? Common sense, if you're not dating your customers, somebody is, I promise you that. Guaranteed somebody is. And I always think to myself when I'm talking to you and talking to our internal folks in our own company, I don't want an opportunity to come up with my customer where anybody, any other partner, anybody else could come in and give them something that I can't. Right now, don't get me wrong, you might not be experts in every field, I get that. But you wanna be part of something where you do have the opportunity to meet their need. And I think you do it through four different things. First of all, there's a discovery phase. You have to do your homework, right? This is where all of the smart people come in. You have to do your homework. You have to be willing to dig in, understand what those problems are, and jump in to discover what the problem is so you can somehow get to a solution, right? From discovery, you have to go to some kind of design phase because you're on the hook for this now. You know this already, by the way. But in every aspect, how do all the pieces work together? Design assurance, we've heard that over and over and over again. You gotta understand what the problem is. You gotta put together a way that you feel like it could be fixed and then you gotta deliver it. And the delivery mechanisms have changed. I was talking to David Weisenberg earlier about a cutover he was at this week ticks me off because we miss playing golf together, but he's had a cutover this week, and boy, have the cutovers changed, haven't they? Remember the old days when the truck rolled up on a Friday night for the cutover, and we rolled out a refrigerator-sized box, the PBX? I was the guy in charge of the pizza and the Mountain Dew and Cokes, and, and the guys would come in, and they'd hook up the thing, and you'd leave, and you'd get your check, and it was over with. Those days are long gone now. So from a discovery phase to a design phase to delivery, we have to change the way we're doing it. And then enhancement. I think that's the fourth thing. You have to enhance that sale. What is next? What is next after this opportunity? Very, very important uh, that you're able to do those four things. I think they're foundational in what we do. And I'm gonna talk to you in a second about how we can help you at IntelliSys ScanSource in, those, in that regard. All of it, for sure, requires influence. And this is a passion of mine, influence. Remember that movie, Jerry Maguire? Anybody in the, in the room see Jerry Maguire? Remember Dickie Fox? Dickie was Jerry's mentor. Jerry, I told you, every single time you have a candidate, remember he would go through and he had the big wooden desk that said Dickie on the front and all that stuff. I had a guy like that in my life. And his name was Steve Scrimcher. Is Steve Scrimcher, he lives in Orlando, Florida. And uh, he told me one time when I was a kid, I said, asked him, I said, Steve, give me some wisdom and some insight. You know, I, I, wanna, I wanna make a difference in this community and what we're doing in technology and, and give me some, you know, what do I do? Like, what, what is the, how do I make this thing work going forward? And he said to me, JD, 
you have to remember three things always in our world that we work in, and actually every world you work in from a business perspective. It's all about three things. It's about the people, it's about the people, and it's about the people. And it was a valuable lesson to me because people for sure equal relationships, and relationships equal culture, which builds communities. And so within those communities, you have to have that influence. And so how do you get that? What does that actually mean? How are you going to influence your current community? Because like it or not, you're gonna have one. It might be positive, I hope it's positive for you, and it could be negative. So uh, the, the roles change in the world we live in today. Influence used to be, you used to be an influencer because you left some kind of residue behind. Maybe it was positive, maybe it was negative. Neil Armstrong was an influencer, why? Because he walked on the moon. Michael Jordan was an influencer, why? Because he could shoot and dunk a basketball better than anybody in this room. It's pretty awesome. And so those guys left things behind. Tom Brady won seven Super Bowls and should have won two more. No offense to the Giants fans. So all that stuff happens and, you, and these guys have influence. Today, it's, it's less about what you leave behind in this more short term. You have influence in this world today just based on how many likes you get online. Like that's embarrassing, right? But it's true, that's what it is today. So how are you, will you be an influencer and how will you influence these companies in making the decisions we're talking about? And I think that, um, I think it's important for several different reasons. The first thing is, and this, this picture kind of tells the story, there are so many people in that room that you have to be part of in influencing. And so the business decision they say today in any kind of enterprise solution has four to five different groups that have a vote. And of those four to five groups, just think about if each one of them bring three to five things to the table in data points, whether it's sales, operations, uh, HR, like I talked about before, et cetera, et cetera. They all have their personal agendas. How are you going to influence those folks in that room to get the vote as you move forward? I think you do it a couple different ways. First off, the influence, I'm gonna read this to you, influence is the capacity to have an effect of, the, of behavior on someone or an entity, and it motivates them. You wanna motivate them in your direction. I think you motivate two ways, by manipulation, right? By manipulation and by motivate, or by uh, inspiration. And so both can be good, by the way, and both can be bad. Both those things can be good. I've been manipulated in a really good way a couple times in my life, right? And I've been manipulated a few bad times too. Same with inspiration. Man, I had a coach in college played sports, that guy was just tough, he was a jerk, and he never picked us up, and it influenced me. Uh, his, his inspiration was negative, but I have another one that was amazing. So I think those are the two ways. I think it's really, really important. I'm hammering on this for you for a reason. How do you make that connection with those customers? How do you put yourself in that room to when the door closes and all the suppliers leave and all the salespeople have gone home, they look at you and say, what do I do? What is the right way to do this going forward? Very, very important. Okay, so it's important to influence. What does that mean in hybrid distribution? We understand buying habits have definitely changed. We know this, right? We understand that it is critically important that we influence in those buying decisions. We talked about discovery. We talked about design. We talked about delivery. We talked about enhancing that solution, setting yourself up for the next time. So what does that mean? Because there are so many things to consider in hybrid distribution. It's about connectivity. It's about cloud services. It's about hardware. It's about software. It's about security. Where I come from at ScanSource Intellisys, it's also about point of sale. It's about scanning. Do you know that FedEx is one of the biggest influencers of telecommunication in the world? UPS, one of the biggest influencers of telecommunications in the world? Why? Why? Because they have a little mobility chip that tells them where to go to make your deliveries on time. And when you scan and that mobility chip goes back to a contact center, it operates in this hybrid model. And so if you're not aware of that, you're missing out, right? You're missing out. So we got a lot, a lot, a lot of things to think about here. It's inclusive of a lot of things in hybrid distribution. And so it can be very confusing. And I know you're thinking to yourself right now where some of you are, some of you aren't because I've seen you 
and I know what you can do. But some of you are saying, Delosier, where do we even begin? Like, where do we begin? Like, this is, I, I think to myself, you know, of getting in this business today as a newbie and just how incredibly paralyzing it could be because there are so many things to look at. And if you think you're confused, because you're a lot of smart people in this room, if you think you're confused, think about where your customers are. Think about the guy that went to school uh, to become a dentist and has 50 offices now. No idea where to begin. Think about the gal that, you know, started her own insurance agency and has 30 locations and needs your help. They don't know where to start. They have no idea where to start. So they need you, right? It can be paralyzing. Your challenge, anybody been on this highway before? Anybody know which one that is? I've been stuck on several of those loops several times. So the key is going from this to this. A nice, serene two-laner, Joe. That's what we want. We want easy, breezy, clear sailing moving forward. So that's where hybrid distribution begins in my mind, and that's also where Intellisys can help you. And so this is the part of the program where I pitch you really, really hard and tell you about how great we are, because we do a lot of neat things, and I think that we could be of huge assistance to you as you go through the menagerie of confusion that we just talked about a little bit ago. Remember, we talked about, um, we talked about the Ds and the, creating the new expectation earlier. This is where we layer on top of you, okay? So from a connect perspective, especially during that discovery phase, we have a stable, a stable of engineers. First off, I have 600 employees. And of the 600 employees, 100 and changes every day. 155, 155 of those employees are in uh, some kind of direct sales. What do the other people do? We have a stable of engineering resources for you. Utilize them, please. Bring them to the table with you during discovery. And there's some in the room, and Ray's getting nervous already, because you're going to get, by the engineers are up here, by the way, and they're wearing red. So now they hate me. So just make sure you talk, yes, make sure you talk to these guys. Yes. See, there's your influence, Ray. It's good. There's like four people. But it's, it, it's, 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 it's important. It's an important four people. So, um, you know, during that discovery phase, use the engineering team at Intellisys. Composing the solution, this is difficult because if, we, if what I said earlier is true, and we have all of these options with our supplier teams, and we have all of these options in technology, how are you going to bring that together in one firm composition? Very, very important. We actually call it orchestration. So you're going to hear us talk about technology orchestration delivered. That's what we consider ourselves. We're orchestrators. We're conductors in the symphony of what we're talking about today. And so bringing um, all of this together and, and allowing it to be packaged in the right way that's consumable, not only for your customer, but maximizing your opportunity to earn. And that's a really important thing, because I know all of you love profits, and all of you love to make a whole bunch of money, and finally optimize. And that's really putting the best solution you can in front of the customer that makes sense. We have the resources to do it at Intellisys. We want to help you with that. We're experts at it. We've been doing it a long, long, long time. We were uh, acquired, as you know, in 2016, in this day of M&A, right? We were one of the originals. At that time, by the way, it's public knowledge. As a publicly traded company, you know, we were billing $650 million annually with you. And today, we're billing $2.6 billion. And so that's, thank you. That's, that's a plausible. Thank you. Really appreciate that. That's, that's important because you've made a lot of money doing that. And uh, we've been very fortunate and very humbled to be a really small part of it. So hybrid distribu distribution empowers all routes to market. It allows you to earn, earn influence and trust with your customers. And so as this complexity continues to come to the st stage, it's critically important that you become those orchestrators to deliver what that customer needs, even if they don't know they need it. But here's the deal. I get paid to say all this. I'm a president of a company, right? I get paid to say all of it. I want you to hear from one of your own. So I have asked Joe Monaco from the Monaco Group. Joe, come on up. Woo! 
Joe, uh, Joe is, uh, so at Intellisys, we have 40 platinum partners. And to be a platinum partner, Joe, as you know, uh, you have to do a million dollars a month in billings. And so uh, we had 37 when I started. And Joe, no, we had 36 when I started. And Joe was my first platinum partner. So I'm Sorry. very grateful for this man. Yes? Thank you. It's true. You always remember your first, Joe. Don't always. forget that. You yep. always remember your first. <laughs> We'll just leave it right there. Love you, John. Yes, I love you too. <laughs> and so, Joe, I mean, I've taught you, look, I can, I can spew it all day, right, about yeah. orchestration and what Intellis can bring to the table. What's your experience been? Yeah, I think, I think you said it earlier. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always evolving. Technology, as it evolves, shifts happen, right? And the best way to say it, and John had it up there, right, the, the, the three Ds and an E, right? So have that process in place, but I think it's about having the right conversations with your end users, right? How do you make that buying process a lot easier and streamlining it to really provide a positive impact to the bottom line of the organization is what's in the forefront of every single conversation we have. And one thing I could say from a partnership perspective, it's about trust and the partners. And there's other partners in the room, like the guys from PCM, Bob and David, you, could guys, you guys could attest to it. And even the supplier level, you have to have trust in who you do business with in order to really successfully deliver to your customers, right? And delivering that, what does that mean? At the end of the day, it's a great experience. Every one of your customers have a great experience with you and they'll buy more, right? And what does that mean? At the end of the day, it's so confusing out there with the touch and the reach that you have, we have, with Intellisys. I mean, there's not one part of a technical stack that we cannot touch, right, John? That's right. So I think that's, that's probably the most critical component in what we do. You don't have to be the subject matter expert in everything, right? But at least you have the resources with Ray's team and the team that provides engineering resources to do the discovery, to bring the subject matter experts in, to make that buying experience really positive. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that I see Right, my value or your value proposition to me as a partner has been that. No, that's good, yeah, yeah. Joe. In the early phases, just I know we talk about stuff like this all the time, but in the early phases, when you're in a competitive situation, I know you win your unfair share, and I also know you've walked away from a few right. because it just wasn't the right place for the Monaco Group. How, why do you just? Why do you keep? How do you keep winning? Like, what what do you recognize in your competitor? What do you see? What weakness is there that allows you? Just give me a little secret sauce, not yeah. the whole thing. But um, first thing is continuously look for new opportunity, right? So never give up. Throw enough stuff against the wall, and sooner or later it sticks. What does that mean? Identify the best opportunities and have the best resources with the perfect value proposition every time. So spend your time wisely identifying the right space to play in and play really well, right? And, and then there's a process. And I think you outlined a really nice process for everybody in the room. Follow that process, right? Typically what happens, and I always said this in, in, in my business, it becomes a natural occurrence. So the more opportunity you have within an account because you're providing value, you're not selling widgets, you're not selling products, you're not selling features, advantages, benefits, you're selling value, the more opportunity will spur up if you're asking the right questions. John, you said something earlier, and I think it's really critical, stay in front of the customer. Have those conversations. Even if you have nothing to say, visit them. Understand what's going on in their environment. For us, that's been a critical component of our success and growth for the company. Right. Yeah, no, it's good. And for you suppliers in the room, you know, and there's a lot of you here, there's gonna be some at our event tonight, attended a couple nice ones last night. Um, from a company perspective, we're number one with the majority of the cloud services providers in this room that are making a huge difference in the world today. Why is that important? Is that a chest thumper? Maybe a little bit, feels good to say it. No, it's the, good. Right, yeah, it's but the truth good. of the matter is, it gives you leverage. Right with them. It gives you leverage with the five nines of the world and the zooms of the world and the eight by eights and the ring centrals, those cloud-based companies. So Joe, I know that you, I mean, just, we have 200 suppliers on the line card. How do you sift through all that if you don't have influencers helping you? Yeah, again, that, that becomes part of the confusion, right? Where do you start and how much, how much time do you waste spinning cycles, right? I think leveraging a partnership that we have with Intellisys has always helped us streamline that process to get to the right supplier with the right fit. John said, again, I'll go back to what John said earlier. 
I'd rather walk away from a deal or an opportunity or providing a solution if I can't provide a stellar experience at the end of the day. That's, that's me. Most people will try to say, yes, I can do it. Don't be the yes person, right? Understand what you're really good at. Make sure you have the right resources. And that, again, becomes, and work the right sales process. Again, it's a process. It's people in process. And that becomes a natural occurrence, right? That's great. In closing, and I want you to stay up here with me as I close, but in closing for everyone in the room, Joe, uh, you've put together an amazing business. I'm really proud of you. I'm really fortunate to be in it with you. Uh, what's one bit of advice? You know, there's some partners in here that are just starting out. There's some that have been in the game a while. There's some that's trying to change and transform their businesses. What would you say to them? How can they, how can they reach the levels that the Monaco, Monaco Group has reached? Um, have a good plan, execute against that plan, and then even more so under adverse conditions, and don't give up, right? Be persistent. If you're starting a business out and you're just starting, it's tough, right? Liquidity may be low, things like that, it will fall into place, but there's one thing that'll take care of that, and it's pure activity, it's pure contacts. It's, it's understanding what type of value you can bring to a client or a business, and continue to drive that message home every single time that you're in front of the customer, right? And again, don't give up. Just don't give up. It, it'll happen. And I don't care how many people are out there. You knock on enough doors, and this is a sales conversation about how do you build a business. It's all about you go to market strategy, you know, and expect things to go wrong. And when they go wrong, course correct, right? You course correct, and then you keep going, and you keep finding more opportunity, provide more solutions, solve more problems, and again, becomes a natural occurrence. And at the end of the day, the financial reward is there, but don't focus on the financial reward. If you're focusing on financial reward, I think you're focusing on the wrong thing. Focus on what's in the best interest of your customer, your client, and make sure you deliver on what you say you can. That, that to me has been the biggest, that's our mantra going forward, and it's always been. Better words never spoken, Joe. Thank you, by the way, you're so generous. Thank you. Thank you. So stay here. You're so generous with your time. I appreciate it. So thank you guys for the time today. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, no matter where you park your business, I sure hope it's with us. But if it's not, no matter where you park it, don't forget those things. Remember the three Ds and the, uh, and the E. And, and if we can help you in any way, shape, or form, just always know we're happy to do it. We're a sea of red. You'll see a lot of red shirts in the crowd. We've got, uh, we're down on that showroom floor. There's a big old circle up there that says Intellisys and a whole bunch of pretty people standing in there ready to talk to you. And uh, also we have an event tonight. I think we have an uh, event over at the boatyard. I think a lot of you are coming. If you can't make it, we'll miss you. If you want to make it and haven't been invited, you officially are. So I'll make everybody here miserable as they come to you. <laughs> I get to say these kinds of things and then walk away. So anyway, thank you all very much for your time. Have an awesome show. I'm going to be here the next two days. Grab me. Let's chew the fat a little bit. and and. Good luck moving forward. Thank you. Nice. Yeah.